Welcome to the Dude Grow Show. What's up, everybody? Today, we've got a great show. We're going to be talking grow or harvest fertilizer flush, the old flushing technique. Fair amount of debate and different grow styles on this, so we'll get into it. And what's growing on? Cannabis or beer. Uh, a little bit of news and vibe from uh, Scotty's daughter's graduation party with family in town. Get to witness a little bit of, uh, of both there. Um, in the news... Big cannabis takeover? I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh, we're covering an article out of uh, Fort Collins, not Fort Collins, that's where the bakery is, out of Denver and Colorado in general, the market, an update on what's going on. People are hurting. The prices are going down continually. This is a, something we have talked about over the last few years. So let's get into it. And don't forget, DDC producers, there is an after show today for you. We got some dank nugs, still got some seeds to hook up. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, man, go to dudegrows.com forward slash support. Become part of the DDC. Get into these benefits. But you producers, stay tuned. Just go over to Patreon. There'll be an after show for you there. Hey, I would never interrupt. I was working really hard not to interrupt. But uh, don't forget, we had a really cool comment, grow talk uh, comment about nicotine for bugs. I want to get into that a little Uh, bit. Nice, nice. That kind of freaks me out a little bit. I'm going to warm up a little bit. I don't know if you've seen. I got... uh, I got my uh, dude, dude, dude chilling, dude chilling, pale ale. You like that? Is that really what that is? Did they know you? Are you sure those guys aren't dudes you see? You put it right there, dude, dude chilling. No, Dinesh from Optic Fuller is like, this is perfect for you, dude. Here's some chilling pale ale. So it's like right on. Ah, uh, and dude, you got to bust my chops when I say you guys, like I bust yours, because I was trying having fun with uh, High C, and he's like, by the way, you bust dudes, dudes chops, I'll say, but you know, you said man during that interview last week <laughs> with, with normal. <laughs> I just said man like twelve times. He's like, you know, it was a girl, right? You know that. Yeah. So I'm as guilty as anyone, dude. <laughs> Nobody's guilty. Do not care. Let's get into Grow Talk, man. Failures in flushing. Guys, Grow Talk questions are off of dudegrows.com. Go over to dudegrows.com. Use that site. Take advantage of it. Use the search bar. Look at all the great grow knowledge over there. Um, great community. The comments. DGC Growers helping growers. Thank you for doing that. Uh, Rambo, can I just ask? I'm so sorry. Can I just ask really quick, Grambo? Yeah, man. Do we have any idea what is getting us age gated? And if so, if we can't smoke during the first two minutes, can we have a countdown timer at least? I think the biggest thing right now (laughs) as I've been tracking it down is the thing that I've wanted to deal with the least. And it's the swearing. I've been good. Yeah, but I I was going to bring it up. Off show, but I guess since we've brought it up now is as good a time as any. <clears throat> I've been I've been looking a lot into it, and there's different rules for short form and long form. Turns out, I said so, chops instead of bolts. Well, so that that 200 seconds we've been talking about, that's actually for short form stuff. Us long form guys doing this 45 to an hour stuff. Sometimes we got to be clean for up to 10 minutes. Are you sure? Uh, I mean, oh, I'm right. not. I'm not playing the game. As uh, High C and I discussed yesterday, we are sure about nothing, and YouTube makes very uh, certain that we're not sure. But I think smoking's okay. Okay, so get high, just don't uh, say the S word. I'm sure that people want to hear about grow talk, man. That's it. That's right. All right, let's do it. That's not that hard to swear. Just get creative. H-E double hockey sticks, Frick. Okay, (laughs) failures in flushing (laughs) by speaking of tweaking. Now, hang on. Speaking of tweaking. I got to ask. I got to ask what that means. (laughs) Because tweaking used to mean like fine-tuning adjustment. You know, tweak on your engine, make everything perfect. You go tweak your grower mount, make it perfect. But the the math heads kind of took tweaking from us, didn't they, man? <laughs> from us experts. Um, you just have to clarify in sentence, you know. Yes, I'm going to go tweak my mountain bike in the garage. Like, very clear. Um, but tweaking in general, yeah, I think that's way more, yeah, put towards. Well, and uh, it kind of tells a story because it's like someone was talking about tweaking. And then he goes, well, speaking of tweaking. There we go. Could be a story. All right, come on, let's get into it. So just completed first run in cocoa, but during the flush, things went a bit awry. Awry. All right. I was gonna say Ari. A W R. Is that how you spell awry? A W R. It is. It is. But somebody needs to buy them a vowel. I guess it's fifty percent vowels, isn't it? All right. Forget it. Um. So flushing. Just a quick overview. This is when you're getting towards the end of your grow. Maybe you have, you can't really say by days, it depends on your irrigation schedule. Maybe you have four more times you're going to water the plants within a week or the last week, the last 10 days. But the idea is you're trying to flush all the extra fertilizer out of it. The concept behind it, whether it's bro science or not, is you don't want to be smoking all that fertilizer. It's really all that nitrogen. One aspect of the fertilizer is really what screws it up. 
Uh, but uh, let's get into it, man. There's actually Coach Steve really helped me understand this too. So let's get into it. We'll get into some comments too. When I started to plain RO water, reverse osmosis water, that's water ran through a filter, takes everything out of it. It's just pure water, very, very minimal, maybe a one, a very low PPM or EC rating. Just uh, a, one span oh, leaves. I, I just want to say about RO water, it can pull things into it. Uh, water's not meant to be completely, zero, you know, have nothing, zero parts per billion. It's actually very hard to get super clean water like that. So it, it all, is always grabbing at things. So uh, because you have RO water, it's not going it, to, it's going to grab at and, and that water's going to hold some nutrient or grab at some salts anyhow. Nice. So when I started to plain our water, one's fan leaf started getting crispy and the other slowly started to fade like I was hoping. I'm assuming maybe I had a salt buildup from the Humboldt nutrients or Humboldt secret nutrients. I don't think that's a good name. Well, oh, because you can't advertise a secret, okay? Mm -hmm. I thought I treated them both the same throughout, but just wondering what I could have done to prevent this. And by the way, thanks for everything y'all do for us. Okay, so he's saying you got two plants. One's getting a little crispy in the leaves. The other's fading like you thought. Uh, giving them both RO water for the flush. And... Let's get to we feature uh, Coach Steve right off the bat because I mean he dropped some knowledge here. First off, he thanked you for all the knowledge. You didn't say thank you back or you're welcome. I don't know about you. Dude. <laughs> 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 yes, I do, yeah, hey, I will say really quick. Thank you for the the good question. Uh, when you leave a good question, that's absolutely important. Whether you're a patron or non-patron, just like Coach Steve who comments, uh, it's so important, man. I want to feature a comment from Coach Steve as well as after the fact talk about my style in flushing. You know how I like to talk about gross styles, but Coach Steve had some good insight on this. Can um, we so upgrade I'm him to head, head coach after this, man? He should be head coach <laughs> Steve or possibly manager Steve. After you guys read this comment, I think we're going to have to upgrade All right, let's to do it. head coach. Anytime. I just upgraded my dog to a captain because her name's Cajun. Now I call her Captain Cajun. <laughs> I don't know why. Dude, These just things weird. happen. All right. Coach Steve says, I'm against flushing to finish, but an RO flush will reduce the osmotic pressure on a dime. And you are feeling those effects. Hang so what's on. an osmotic pressure? We like to learn yeah. in public. Yes. We actually just stopped and talked about this. And the best information, the best way to explain it, I think, Grambo found with chat GPT, man. Yeah. So is this a... Is this a sea change? Well, the thing is that, that it's a it's a scientific concept, so it knows what it is. So I just told it to explain it to me like I was five years old, and it did. No, and you said it was sugar. So I, I, tell, tell me what you found out, Grandpa. So basically, it's like the dissolved solids inside of things like affect the pressure. So and dissolved solids could be your nutrients. So you, this one they're talking about. If you did for this example, they're saying if you dissolve some sugar in some water. But dissolved solids, when you take a PPM meter or a TDS meter, that TDS is total dissolved solids. Yep. And so, yeah, so when the, as you, uh, they'll have like certain membranes that you can have, like to do like experiments with this, where they'll only allow like the dissolved solids through. And as the, the ratio, or they won't al allow the dissolved solids, but they'll allow the clean fluids through. Right. And as the ratio between those two things changes, as more dissolved solids, the pressure changes. So then water can flow through the membrane, but it can't flow back the other way. So I think the way this, that he's insinuating is this apl applies to the plant, the plant root zone the exact same way. So rather than it sucking and drinking, it's actually the difference in the osmotic pressure that forces well, the, the water up and through. The RO. Remember we were talking about yeah. RO doesn't want to stay completely stripped, yeah. completely yeah. clean. That's what's happening. Is the, the RO is sucking that. Uh, it's the osmotic pressure from the RO that is sucking and holding those nutrients is yeah. actually sucking right out of the plant. So head coach Steve, yeah. respect. I All have right. one other tidbit on it. Um, so osmotic pressure is regulated via osmotically active substances, which is your nutrient, which is potassium, sugars, aminos. So that RO has none of it in it, like you're saying. So that's why he's saying it stops it on a dime. So your um, soil. Let's go on with this. Your soil, Consider the microbes, the organic materials in there, the humix and fulvics, all those are going to affect it as well. Uh, so instead of going to nothing, consider reducing your EC to around a 0.6 instead, um, which is probably, I don't know what that it correlates. I'm still so PPM orientated in my head, um, but bringing it down quite a bit. The old I white ash you. argument is why growers came up with flushing and hydroponics. And that's when you're smoking a joint or burning a bowl all the way through. Are you left with black ash? Or are you left with white ash? Um, so 
But I, what I've oh. learned from someone who knows and understands the science is that reducing sugars in the plant is a big part of obtaining the burn we want. I was given the example that if you burn glucose or fructose, you end up with black carbon. The tip I got was to reduce and ultimately remove nitrogen. This is the fade concept. No chlorophyll, no sugar. And this is like, again, I agree with Coach Steve here as well. I like learning with everybody. I don't claim to be educated on all this, but I listen to people who are. When it comes to time to ripen your plants, avoid neurotic and burnt leaves. Feed a moderately low AC with plenty of runoff. It says you can go the CalMag approach only, which is just flushing with just the CalMag. I've heard people recommend that. But that does add some nitrogen, not enough to move the needle, but I'd rather have some PK in there still. Reducing nitrogen is, is the way to go, but it's not necessarily the best way with every nutrient program. Whatever you decide it's, going forward, be mindful it, of osmotic pressure and the plant response to sudden changes in the root zone. Because that is quite the sudden change if the plant's always used to getting some food, and then you go to absolutely nothing, you know? Yeah. By the way, 0. 0.6, he's saying he would go down and reduce it to 0. 0.6. That's uh, either depending on what scale, but three to 400, right around three, 400, depending on the, okay. what scale you're on. So that's very low, but it's not low enough where it's not nothing. You know, it's still, it's still, you know, I'm thinking about a person, you know, they go on a liquid diet or something. All you're allowed to have is Gatorade. You still stay alive, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I was going to say, as far as uh, now, a few tidbits on this. My style has always been I go to plain water, not RO. <laughs> my tap water is probably like, I think, 70, maybe 100. I don't know. Something just pretty low. Um, and I have probably about, I'll do maybe eight, seven waterings before the chop. I get, The plant gets pretty faded, man. Sometimes I barely have any green in any of my leaves. It's all yellow and faded out. And other growers are like, dude. You're, you're 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 missing out. These plants would produce more buds. They would you know have a better yield if you didn't do that. I'd love to see the flowers ripen out like that. I have no issue with my harvest, my quality, and uh, and doing this now more and more. I know we did a show with Guru back in the day. Um, he agreed as well, man. He likes to go to the end with Jay. Hey, don't take all your nutrient out. Just lower it down quite a bit. Like you mentioned, 400 ppm. That's is pretty not, damn low. That's a not, really light veg feed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm jumping out because I got to say this. It's not the nutrient, man. It's the nitrogen. You can have uh, phosphorus and potassium in there and grow great wheat. I mean, it's, well, it, that's not over. You can't really tell so much, but that's not like some dark green fox tailed out weed, which is what you get with too much nitrogen. But that's finished to the, to the end with P and K. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, the one thing that's tough with this not many growers to really take the time with this. You need to grow out the same strain from the same cut, a few different cycles, which is gonna take you over a year. And you need to do it one way where you, you, know, you go the low PPM, low EC route. Then you need to try the other way where you do a plain water route. Hmm, excuse me. So a lot of times we get advice from growers um, but we don't really know why they came to that advice. You know, There's not a lot of growers that are being Full on analytical A and B trials. Um, and me, I'm totally guilty of it because I love popping different seeds. If you're popping different seeds, there's no way you can t you can you know say much of anything about your end results. I mean, you it's can, hard, but dude. That so reminds me. I was on I was on Instagram earlier today. I never get on Instagram, but uh, is his name Arjan from uh, Greenhouse Seed Co. It's at Greenhouse Seed Co. on Instagram, uh, but follow them because he's over in Thailand and he's just in this huge greenhouse with like 48, I think it's 100 phenos. He's like, this is pheno 48 right here. I thought it was like, here's pheno 113 and they're in a huge greenhouse and I trust that. That's the way you learn about plants. That's the way every other plant is grown. I like it. I like it. I got to get more on IG a little bit, man. I got uh, one thing. I know it's I tell a time people suck, uh, the resource. Bro. It's a huge what? time suck. It's a time suck. <laughs> if you start getting into it, then all of a sudden you're hanging out with the family, but whipping out the phone and watching some funny reel that somebody sent you. And honestly, if you talk about cannabis, you're just going to get banned anyway. So you might as well not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, show this. <laughs> I was going to show real quick. Uh, uh, dudegrows.com there's so many good resources this click that link here from maestro um that I put on there grambo called the flush yeah, if you will damn fine flush. and just yeah those two pictures man that's what i like to see day of chop guys we're looking at you know before start the flush and then the day of chop that's what i like my leaves to look like 
I don't see that often. I'm not saying if you don't achieve this, you're going to have a bad harvest or bad flower. I don't but know. That's what I see in nature, you know? Does nature grow weed like maestro? <laughs> 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 you know, I, I'm just saying we're doing a lot of unnatural stuff here and uh, I'm not sure I yeah. never I never get that much fade I mean I will sometimes get some purple on there but nothing like that I'm hoping to drive my plants hard until I don't know still I was still well, you know with a lot of plants bulk up the last 10 days the last two weeks I don't want to be starving them and I would uh, I would fade out my plants that deep. And I'd say one time I got distracted, like with life circumstances. Right. And I was like, well, I'll just like uh, maybe I can harvest a few days later. All of that yellowing starts to go into the bud. Yeah. And so your bud will start yellowing out. So it is good to flush that deep. But if you uh, get distracted by life, it's going to annihilate your crop. Potentially be careful, guys. I'll lean to the, the, I think the, if we had a, a botanist, <clears throat> horticulturist, uh, would, would, the science would say more and more I'm hearing low EC, don't take it completely out. It's not my style. I like to take it completely out. Maybe someday I'll have the time to do the, the testing, Scotty, but if you want to, go ahead. Well, it, it depends what you've got in your soil. If you've got three, four, 500 PPM of salts built up in your soil, yeah, that's probably why they uh, tell you to flush. Because you're going to rely on all the stuff that's in your soil. Uh, measuring your runoff every now and again is an interesting thing to do. And you'll be surprised if you're just giving them hot hydroponic nutrients all the time. You'll be surprised. Oh, my God. I've done that. I had a 100 gallon. One time I grew in a I had a 100 gallon reservoir sitting around. I'm like, heck, let's make this a big bed. Why not? It was the weirdest set grow setup. So I filled it up with peat. And then I actually put uh, uh, like six different air stones in bags, in perlite, like to oxygen. Doesn't it make you laugh bed. now? Doesn't it make you laugh now? Overcomplicated stuff. <laughs> and then one time, I was, yeah, I was like, let's check the EC, and it wouldn't, the meter wouldn't even read it. It was over 2,000. You know, the meter wouldn't read over 2,000 PPM or whatever. So I was like, holy cow, man, plants look pretty damn good, though. I did, and I flushed. I ran probably 100 gallons of water through that bed, and I could barely get it down, man. I was like, is this worth it? I don't know. But yeah, the things we used to do. Hey, I wanted to thank everybody in the comments here. Maestro Sunny and Vectopia, um, the husband and wife grow team, Sensi Media, who got speaking of tweaking with the post. Thank you for putting that up on dudegrows.com. Dr. Feel Good, you had a great long, not long in a bad way, man, just <laughs> dropping knowledge as well. Um, Ashley Green chiming in. And then one last thing, go over to dudegrows.com. We don't say this enough. Right on the homepage, click on DGC Grow Guides. There is like a plethora of good knowledge there, guys, that we just don't tell you about enough on the show. Uh, so check that out as well. That's where you can find articles from like local DGC Maestro, Soup the Gardener's got some awesome articles over there. Yep. So check out the Grow Guides. Hey, I, um, I feel like we maybe take Maestro for granted these days. He's been with us for so long and he's just always been answering stuff for us, man. So if you're new to the show, Jay Maestro, it's between him and JR Token as the number one and number two uh, founding members of the DGC. And uh, Maestro has been writing for us and just being our residential, our in-house expert for uh, however many years has been, eight, nine years. So huge respect to you. I've been growing a long time and I've deleted most of my notes out of my phone about growing. I still have one folder and it's called J Maestro Notes. Yeah. Just in case anything <laughs> happens, man. Everything you know? that guy says, man, write it down. Ah, that's good stuff. So shout out to you, Maestro. We, we do appreciate you. You got something uh, fun here? Fun here? Something Use? funny in the middle of the show, I see. Well, dude, this out. is, I know you like funny stuff, but this is the image that Grambo put up today. Yeah. Uh, I think One-Eyed Cat Cannabis made this. Yep. One-Eyed Cat, I'd, <laughs> we were thinking about going live because uh, I accidentally had a little technical glitch here on my end yesterday. So I kind of screwed the dude and Scotty out of a show yesterday. So we're nice enough to do it again. And uh, so we were going to go live. So Cat made this awesome thing, but we ended up uh, figuring out to where we could just be on regular schedule. But we still want to show awesome video. Scott had a little nitpick with it, I believe. Yeah, man. As I get high with a little help from my friends, the Beatles, Sergeant Pepper. And I was looking, I go, hey, man, uh, am I John or Paul? I hope I'm John. You know, John Lennon, he's cool. And he made me Ringo. <laughs> Ringo's the last one I want to be. Although Rambo says he's still alive, which I guess maybe I do want to be Ringo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paul's still alive, though, too, I believe. Yeah. 
By the way, Grandpa knows nothing about the Beatles. I was just about to ask. I was like, so is uh, is dude Paul? Is that who that is? Who am I? Dude's got to be Paul, man. Am I? Can you just list who we are? Who's Banner and who's me too? Uh, oh, do me a favor. Click the next one, man. I don't really have. I don't really. Uh, I don't know that so well. No. Do me a favor. I think the next one is the real Sergeant Pepper. See, this is why I don't go live. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Right there. The ultimate classic yes, rock. Yes, yes, sir. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, I'm definitely Ringo, right? I don't know. Is that Ringo? Yeah, that's Ringo. Wow, he's young. You're well, John. You made yourself John Lennon. Get out of here, man. I'm John. No, Cat made me Lennon. No, I didn't. Best, I didn't make it. Thanks, Cat. Next segment, sir. But t- we all know what happens to Lennon, so I don't. Uh... So he's still the coolest, man. Didn't he rule over Russia? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. All right. Hey, if you guys are having a good time today, don't forget, comment, like, subscribe. That always helps us on YouTube. Uh, This episode officially brought to you by realgrowers.com. Get your guys self some recharge or grow dots. I wanted to talk about recharge, man, because the power of microbes, people, especially if you're growing more inert mixes, you know, like a a peat isn't completely inert. Cocoa. Cocoa. That's my mix. Uh, yeah. Cocoa, cocoa and, is my I, mix. I use a really high quality cocoa core. I worry about aerating it. Sometimes I've been using perlite lately. So just give it a bunch of air and then a bunch of soil microbes. I'm also using the sip buckets that are allowing just the right air to moisture ratio. And it's made the perfect environment for these soil microbes to thrive, even using salt based nutrients and uh uh, yeah, I was going to say even using the bottom feeding buckets, but a uh, huge benefit, man. Definitely. And you have the complete package there. I like you got bacteria, trichoderma, mycorrhizal, mycorrhizal, if I will. Um, but mycorrhizal, that was one of the first ones I learned about, man. In my growing game, the top two things that changed my game in the past, what, 20 years almost now? Uh, microbes and LED lighting. Um, so if you're not getting microbes in your media, guys, what do you got there? I'm just looking at my root picture. I took it off the wall. Uh, this is just, <laughs> this is like, a, yeah, you see a, like a fuzzy root. I think Grambo's got one too, but I actually keep this on my wall. All, yeah, all those fuzz points are surface area of the roots. Those are little root hairs and they can get colonized by microbes, by mycorrhizae, which is something that's going to protect it. Uh, and it's also something that's going to feed it nutrients. So look at all those nutrient absorption points. That is huge, tremendous benefit feeding the plant from having roots like that. Yeah, man. And you make it easy over at realgrowers.com, guys. You can get a two-plant bundle for 20 bucks. This is going to go two plants for a 16-week cycle. It's got the grow dots in there, too, which is your one-part nutrition that you add to your media, yep. uh, which is always nice to try something out, bring a new into the garden just on a couple plants. So go to realgrowers.com, coupon code DUDE in Canada, dudesworld.ca. And don't forget about our pros when you're shopping for your grow. That's right, Grandma. I'm running quick, man. Right on. <laughs> yeah. Cold brew is kicking in. Dudegrows.com forward slash pros. DGC vetted gear. Coupon codes listed over there to save you guys money. Go with your dollars. Help the show. It's going to feature seeds here now today. Simply the best seed bank out there. A great customer service. Seeds ship fast right to your house from the States. You're not waiting for it to go over the oceans. James Bean will take care of you on customer service over there. If you have some issues, maybe they don't pop. Maybe you had a problem. That's why we like Seeds Here Now, an OG supporter of Dude Grow Show, man. Shout out to Seeds Here Now. Coupon codes for Seeds Here Now are also listed over there. There's a couple of them. So go to the pros list and vote with your dollars. All right. Okay. What'd you give me? A right? Or a I right gave on? you an all right. How about that, man? I need okay. some of that cold brew. Okay. You know, since uh, I feel better, I got uh, amazingly or, or miraculously, I had the stomach virus for almost three weeks, two and a half weeks. The day before all the company came over and I had to host everybody. My kid just graduated. I got better. I was like, wow, man. So good stuff. The microbes came and went, sir. So if I got my timing right here, uh, we got the DGC cup like in uh, just over a week or something like that. June 3rd, guys, Four Collins, yeah. Colorado. So you're, not, you're missing out. You're not coming to taste on over 50 plus strands of cannabis for four hours. Get your free one upon coming in. Everybody's a judge with voting tokens. Go to dgccup.com. 
going to be hanging out with a bunch of producers. Excited to see all you DDC producers there. You make this show happen. If you're listening to me and you're a producer and you haven't gotten your sticker pack, you haven't hooked up on some free seeds, some seeds here now, hit me up over on Patreon, man. I'll take care of you. Uh, go to dudegrows.com forward slash support. If you've had a better yield, if you've had a laugh, if Scotty's cracked you up, or maybe your wife just doesn't like his voice and that's why <laughs> right. uh, it, it helps support the show, guys. Uh, right, we got a uh, few producers to shout out to. We got what's going on comments here. I'm going to shout out to Autism Dad. Hoping to see you there, buddy. And Skunk's ass. Hey, don't forget the bud Hold plug. On. Hunter C. I like that. <laughs> the bud what's up, plug. Hunter C? Shout out. New producer. And I don't know about the bud plug. Okay. I see what he did there, man. I see what he did. There. It works on so many levels. <laughs> Go All right, on. man. You had an interesting... Um, Take here. Do you want me to re- read from Super Cooper, Super Koopa Troopa, forty-eight seventy-nine? Please, please, sir, do it. A little IPM talk here, guys. Taking care of your pests. You can get a vape nicotine concentrate online, dilute it with water, and use that as a systemic soil drench that kills all bugs. Worst case scenario, your bud has some nicotine. <laughs> oh, I'm have next thing you know, I'm like, man, I got to keep toking on this bud. <laughs> yeah, it's special. Gives me energy. Gives me a little, uh, I don't know what. I smoked a cigarette. I think one hit of it when uh, I had hash in it. I, I did not like the way it made me feel. It almost made me nervous, you know, jittery a little bit. Mm. I hear you. I can enjoy like two hits off of a back. <laughs> but then after that, it's because I don't mind the taste. It's an interesting taste. But after that, I'm getting that uh, nicotine buzz and it's like, eh. Yeah, but this is interesting. First off, it got me uh, remembering these things called neonicotoids, which are variants or it is nicotine and it's a very small amount of nicotine and it's diluted and you spray it on a crop and like merit was one, uh, mallet was one and they were huge back in the day because like organophosphates, like the old school pesticides are really bad for everything, kills everything, uh, kills the people that, that spray it. It's really dangerous. These neonicotoids were a lot safer and they are nicotine though. Nicotine's a poison. Now they say the dose makes the poison. Is that what they say? Yeah, I get that right. Uh, and a lot of nicotine or anyway, it's poisonous. So it just got me down the rabbit hole. Uh, first off of how uh, the cannabis industry, how their hands really are tied using pesticides. Every other industry gets to use neonicotoids, including, do me a favor, click on that. It says what foods are, uh, yeah, what's it? I think it's the next one, maybe, but let's see. No, it's what foods you're allowed to, yeah. All right, so yeah, this is what foods you're allowed to spray neonicotoids on. I remember it's banned for cannabis, but apples, pears, <laughs> Uh, apricots, cherries, peaches, and plums, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, walnuts, chestnuts, hickory, uh, cucumbers, pumpkins, squash, zucchini, eggplant, peppers, tomatoes, and leafy vegetables, as well as many herbs Mm -hmm. and tobacco. So it's just kind of, it's, I don't know. I don't know if we want to be spraying this shit on our plants or not, but it is interesting that every other lobby got, they got a, can use these, but it's banned on cannabis. And I just think it should I be tested, you know? In Europe, they, they come a long way. I mean, we got to talk about the bees, man. That's why. In Europe, I believe that is banned why. Because um, obviously, I mean, the bees are like the most forgotten about badass, hardest workers that we need around. We need the bees. People. Yeah, you know what? I should have said that, man. And that is that the reason they don't use these, the reason I don't use them down at the bamboo nursery is cause it messes with the bees. First off, bamboo doesn't really get pests, but it messes with the bees. It, uh, th- that's what they're talking about, the colony collapse disorder. They go sucking on those plants, which is seems like it's pretty much every plant, and uh, bringing that nicotine back to the uh, back to the colony, and can't get smokes in that colony, and all of a sudden the whole thing just collapses, man. Shit, it was diff. pretty awesome. I did have a good hike through it in Maui through a bamboo forest, and it was like that shiz was like. 20, 30 feet tall, sometimes more. And when the wind would blow, they'd cackle together. And it was like a monoculture, though. But it wouldn't, it, you know, it was all, the only thing in there was bamboo. I guess probably because it's spreading. Um, but it was it was pretty cool to walk through, I'll say. Deal. So okay. I'm still thinking of the world's largest beehive. 
that I've ever seen. Remember I told you about yeah. it? It was in my attic. And that the, I found out about it because I thought somebody was throwing like honey on my car or something on my car. And it was uh, just the beehive just oozing down, just oozing down honey from the attic into my garage. Oh, wow. Are you Googling Damn. the world's largest beehive? <laughs> I was curious. <laughs> I'm telling you, this thing was hundreds of pounds. Wow. Was I was lucky insane. enough to have a swarm end up in my yard. I've never seen a swarm before when they leave a hive or whatever, and then they yeah. all follow or go that quick. And they, they get, it was like the size of about a basketball on a branch in my yard. And beekeepers, like, well, I Googled, what do you do? Like, call a beekeeper. They yep. love it. I've That's talked, we featured it on the show before. That's when he didn't have a beekeeping suit for me. And I asked him if it was okay at, at the point he asked me to help him. Like, it's okay to help you now? He's like, yeah. And they got stung on the throat. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. we we called the beekeeper and he looked exactly the way you would expect a beekeeper to look you know, like in overalls <laughs> and yeah uh it's pretty awesome though good stuff but he took the colony but he didn't take any of the hive my dad was too cheap to pay for him to actually remove all that stuff so had a few hundred pounds of honeycomb sir <laughs> 420 O-B-G-Y-N. That is Organic Basement Grower Yielding Nugs. Okay, guys, nice. that's what that is. It's one of my faves. <laughs> All right, so another tip here for past nematodes, green lace wings, and one or two mantis eggs while my seeds are busy germinating. That's my pest management. Nematodes, wow. guys, take care of fungus gnats in the root zone, some other things, I believe. Green lace wigs, what are they predators on? I think they are a no. general predator, I think is what they I say. so. Yeah. And but, praying uh, mantis as well. They'll go for really whatever everything. they can get their hands on. Including um, the green so, lace wings. <laughs> the other, any other pair, man. Then they'll eat each other. Hey, by the way, this is my kind of IPM. I'm ho you, you hope that you never have to use something super strong like uh, a neonicotoid, or I should, I would never use one in my cannabis. And this is a great alternative to any kind of pesticides. Yeah, it says prepare ahead of time, especially if you already know that you have or had issues in the past. It works so good. Once in a while, I'll have to introduce and bring pests into the garden to keep everyone happy. Ghost mantises are good communities. They get along with each other, even if food isn't scarce. No one has issues, even when three or four are hanging on a six-inch seedling in a solo cup. Interesting. Unless cool. someone is in their spot, I had to break up a fight over it. Bring out the upset <laughs> one and give the little one some honey, and he will simmer down. What the like hell? A little prey. <laughs> wow. wow. Mantises cool. are cool. We had one at our grow store. I worked at Way to Grow in Boulder way back in the day, and we had a pretty decent plant set up in the front windows. And this thing that was around for at least close to a year, it was awesome just to have it. You go, and it got pretty big, maybe like four inches, five inches or so. We get food for it and whatnot, you know. But that I don't like bringing in. Uh, pests in the garden to keep everyone happy i know um, unless they're pests that don't mess with my plant plant yeah it's true you know the nematodes are okay because they just kind of go away after a while you know it's true but, nematodes but yeah, man right. the best thing for fungus gnats ever if you get viable nematodes oh, yeah. just to say viable i've ordered them on amazon before i'm like guilty of going around the local bug there actually is a bug lady here it's buglady.ca Whoa. Um, but the problem is when you order nematodes from them, like I only need enough for like five gallons of water. They're like, oh, we got a sponge for, you know, a 500 gallon reservoir or something. But uh, regardless, one more comment here uh, yes, from your mailman grows. It says, I hope there are 2023 Growers Cup t-shirts for the DGC Cup. Of course there are. Yes. Daddy, you're supposed to be wearing it. You know what? I think <laughs> I think I had three of them and I think my three friends grabbed them. I think they were pretty excited. Yeah. Warehouse Kyle, we some, you know, the guys. We got some good Grower Cup shirts. We don't promote merch enough. We actually have dogrows.com forward slash merch. But right now, there's stickers. We got some new rolling trays in. I don't think we can sell grinders because the credit card companies don't like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and a few yeah. other things at dogrows.com forward slash merch rocking. Yes. Uh, check it out. Hey, as long as we're taking care of business, up. can I tell you our new strategy, our new thing? 
we moved the grow stickers. We had some issues with the grow stickers being on dudegrows.com. Uh, so we moved it over to its own domain. Banner made us a new website, growstickers.com. Same thing. Uh, we want to be able to sell the stickers there, which we had issues with credit card processing. So uh, we just moved over there. There's sticker packs and uh, it's just a cool contest. First three weeks. Uh, at DGC, you can use uh, you can make your own stickers over there. Do we have some tool? I think we got. I don't know if there's a tool there or not, but you can make your own stickers, upload them, and then I think after on the fourth week, we're gonna pick the ones we want to vote on, and uh, we'll pick a winner at the end of the week. Man, you will get to vote. But yeah, you can say sorry, I'm distracted because Grandpa. This is a nice site. Yeah, very cool. And we're going to offer more sticker packs. A big deal. We've been trying to promote the show, grow the community. And it is difficult with cannabis, even promoting the DGC Cup. It is difficult if you have like a website like DudeGrows.com. Nobody will allow you to promote. So the idea is we can keep this GrowStickers.com clean-ish and uh, be able to promote, be able to bring people back and hopefully grow the community. Uh, this is, uh, I've got a whole ge genius marketing team now, man. This is above my pay grade, man. But it's, uh, it's a great create, idea. Yeah, anybody can create some stickers over there. I like it. I like to see what uh, we're going to And being able to print off and share the ones that are created by the DDC, that's pretty awesome. And you said, uh, yeah, the, the discrimination, we were trying to promote the DDC Cup on some different channels. And yeah. Even Reddit. Reddit denied me. I tried to get a Reddit ad up, like a paid ad. Yeah, and yeah. they're like, no cannabis. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, Grandma, you know wasn't what? there some pretty sketchy shiz on Reddit? Yeah, hey, that, that was so shocking to me. They, they let you put, post hardcore porn, guns, but not the uh, cannabis. But now, now see if you can buy an ad for growstickers.com. Ooh. Mm, see what I'm saying there? They have a few links to Dude Grows, a few embedded uh, videos in there. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, High C is sneaky, man. You know, you put him and Banner <laughs> together, and they're, they're a force to be reckoned with. I got a good idea. We can link it through joshgrambo.com, and then we'll <laughs> sneak you guys in there. And uh, you end. go up there, it'll be all ads and stuff. <laughs> it'll take eight minutes. I went to si sportsillustrated.com for something today. It took for, it was all advertisements. It took like a minute. By the time it started, it was done loading all the ads. I was out of there, you know? Yikes. Jeez. A few shout outs here before what's going on. Shout out to the producers making it happen. Sensi smell and healthy green. How's it growing? Ooh, Ooh. grateful dank. That's that's banners kind of thing right there, man. You go to all three shows of grateful dank. <laughs> and Lucy Lucy. Oh no, loose Lucy. Huh. I don't know which one I like better. I can loose Lucy. All right. Hope you're coming to the DGC Cup. Yeah, I don't know about the three show thing. I've had some friends that do that. Like, man, if whoever's coming this weekend, we're going to all three shows. It's like, are you sure you want to do that? You Here's know what it is? Stuff. I figured it out with the Grateful Dead. It's it's the community, just like the DGC. Uh, it's the community. Go check out the the live stream, you know, or or the. Uh, uh, what do they call that? The live chat? Yeah, live chat. It's not about what we're talking about. It's about, <laughs> it's about friends hanging out with each other. That's and that's what the dead scene's about, too. It's like fish, man. I'm not saying they're not talented musicians. I like <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> you wouldn't say that if you didn't really think it deep down inside. Uh, who else you got here? Are you doing a shout out to Kyle Cushman? Yeah, man. Uh, just do me a favor, man. I like Kyle Cushman, though. We never talk about okay. Cool, man. You know, that's him and uh, Strain Hunters, dude. Uh, Arjan. <laughs> say. <laughs> Do me a favor. Click the next one. All right. That's Kurt Hammett, Kurt Hammett from uh, from Metallica. Right. <laughs> Click the next one. Let me see, man. I thought he looked like Kyle Cushman, man. Here's the real Kyle Cushman. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're pretty cool. From afar, you know, from afar. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, Kyle Cushman got glammed the fuck up. Huh? Uh, we actually had an interview hanging out with Kyle Cushman a long time ago. That was at your old house, Scotty. I remember it. Um, <laughs> and he was a really nice dude, guy. man. And just a super technical yes. grower. Very different than than uh, our style, you know, but very technical, I remember. Really into the uh, measuring. And what, do you imagine that? 
A and B testing. And that's what made them good. <laughs> uh, so what's going on, man? You had uh, your daughter graduate from high school. Congratulations. My son's <laughs> about to as well. What do you do for that, by the way? Am I supposed to think, probably give them money? That's probably what they want is money. Did you give your daughter money? I didn't. I didn't. No. I actually slacked on the gift, I guess. I don't know. I didn't give her any gift, man. I guess I screwed up. <laughs> I don't know. Dude. That's what I'm asking you. I guess we're not good dads. We don't I'm know. Not. You know what? I made her a beautiful party, uh, which she planned herself, did a great job. But uh, I tell you what did happen. S- smoking and just get nice and loose at this party. About three quarters of the way through it, uh, my wife comes up and goes, hey, you have to make a speech. <laughs> and I was like, what? And it was my jerk friend. It's our jerk friend, Perry, was just messing with her. And he goes, nobody makes a speech. I just told her that. And so she made me make a speech. Uh, And it was cool. Uh, But I will tell you, I just want to do a little weed report kind of thing or follow prohibition report. Uh, My brother, who's like a fairly, I'll call him square attorney, uh, just never smoked weed, doesn't get it. Uh, My mom, who is just super square. I know she doesn't listen to the show. But uh, they both tolerated Definitely me. And, you know, it was kind of, I don't know why it's so stressful just having people at your house, but it's stressful. And I was like, I'm not going to make it not smoking. I know you're my mom, but I'm still going out and getting baked and coming back. And uh, she accepted it. When we were having the party, all the kids, and when I say kids, 21 years old, you know, the, uh, you know, the cousins and stuff like that, they didn't give a crap about beer. They were going and back and doing really good dabs. That's what, and you know, when like they it. came, yeah, when they came out, they weren't like, Ugh. they were like, holy shit, I'm high. But it wasn't the same thing as we were talking about, like sneaking with a bottle or sneaking with some beers or, you know, sneaking away and getting drunk. Like, I remember I was just peeing in my grandma's, you know, my grandma's house and I fell in her shower with the shower curtain and stuff. That was like me learning how to get drunk, man. Yeah. I mean, out great. they have both have their, their, you know, yin and yangs, you know, alcohol can be a social lubricant, can be good at a party. It can be severely dysfunctional as oh, well. Yeah. I mean, I don't think cannabis has the potential to be as dysfunctional by any means as alcohol, depending on the individual and the consumption, but it can give you social anxiety. It can make you uncomfortable around people. It can have negative mm. effects too. Did the opposite what? for me where I went and I was like, uh, so, you know, it's like my mom and her new husband. And uh, I was like, OK, I think I'm going to go. I've done enough of this entertaining. I'm going to go out and get stoned. It came back two, three minutes later, you know, 10 minutes later. And uh, yeah, I was in a much better mood had much more conversation going. Uh, had him help me change my. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did. I used my nervous energy and I just cooked the whole time, man. Gave me something else to focus on. I mean, it is nice that it, it used to be if you even displayed cannabis at a party or you know people were using it, the, there'd be plenty of judgment. And now it's like almost like you could put it out on the party tray. I mean, here's a cooler of some beer. Here's some pre rolls. You know, do it. Go go have some dabs if you want. Um, so I dig that. You're talking about the pressure, man. I mean, people. It depends on what. I'm a people pleaser, man, and I like people to have a good time. And DJ sure. Cup bring, always brings me some anxiety and pressure, if you will, just like I want things to go smooth and hosting events and maybe even more sometimes with your family. I, sh- I think it should be less with your family, though, unless they're very judgy. Probably got Ooh, a pretty they're back judgy, camp. man. Yeah, I get. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I get that uh, judgy clause, man. Yes, they're judgy, sir. But they weren't judgy about the weed this time. Interesting. You know, things are changing. They're learning. Oh, they, but They're things right. are changing, you know, and I bet you they do say it. You know, my generation was sneaking off with booze and it wasn't always working out so great. Uh, yeah, the, the, there was a lot of people here that were sneaking out, <laughs> sneaking out. Into the, I opened up the bakery and when I'd come in here, there was always people in here, including my mother-in-law. How long did it take for her to become a complete stoner? She's living in the same town as me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll throw in a little uh, more of an entertainment segment here because we had a long weekend here this past weekend. Because long weekend means May or Monday was a holiday, Victoria Day in British Columbia. I'm not even sure what that really means. Um, I'll take it. It's something with the Queen and all that stuff. That's some of the silliest that stuff I've ever heard. But regardless, 
Uh, so I was like, hey, maybe I'll watch a family movie or something. I heard uh, we, we had Margo on from Illinois Normal last Thursday, I believe. Great episode if you guys didn't catch it. And she's like, you should really check out the movie Weed the People. They're about to take it off Netflix. It's a powerful documentary about uh, cannabis uh, helping cancer patients. Um, and it's I think it focuses on some kids. So, I mean, it's, you know, heart, heart, heart wrenching and also, you know, rewarding. And my wife's kind of like, you know, yeah, uh, don't come on so heavy, heavy, man. <laughs> What is the so logo like, nope. there? Hang on, what is that <laughs> logo? I want like a baby with a, you know, his fist up in the air and a, a weed vaccination thing. What is that? <laughs> Some man? sort of green power sort of fist going on there? I don't know. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Well, if you've, if you've watched it, give us some comments. I plan on watching it here shortly, apparently by myself. Maybe I'll get my <laughs> son to watch it with me because my son has watched all the episodes of Chimp Empire, which I was like, okay, maybe we'll try to watch the first one of these. And this stuff's a trip, man. It features like a documentary series on these chimps. I forgot what part of the jungle. I've only watched half of one. And looking at the baby chimps, like that one on the left with the Oh, the they're so top. cute. They're very cute. I want like, to take a picture with them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is a cute picture of a mom and a baby chimp. And some things that they do are just like, oh, you know, the grooming, the ritual and all that. And then other things are like, oh, my God. <laughs> Like Dude, that chimp just that. ate that chimp's baby and that chimp just like, like just to see the radical ways of life of these creatures that are pretty damn similar to us. I mean, I give it rip a bong, get pretty high, eat some edibles and watch some chimp empire. It's, it's I, kind of also an emotional roller coaster and very captivating. Why are you look looking at, at it so weird? Cause let's look at the faces of these things, man. They are a trip. And isn't that they're about the closest thing DNA wise to us? Yeah. Yeah, wow. We are like 99.8% oh, wow. similar to them. I mean, just looking at them up close like that, it really is trippy. Yeah. You ever seen Chimps yeah. on oh. Weed? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> is there a show about macaques? Do you guys know about macaque monkeys? They're the uh, the sexual breed of the Oh, thing. yeah, yeah dude. My it, friend, I, I was always telling my buddy, I was like, oh, yeah, back in the day, it'd be cool to have a pet monkey. No. And he goes, yeah, my aunt had one. He, he goes, it wasn't that cool. No. And I'm like, well, what do you mean it wasn't that cool? He's like, it would jerk off and throw it at you and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, it's not cool. And do you know how they kill you when they come after you? Uh -uh. They they bite your genitals and fingers off. Yeah, they're into those. Yeah. Because they, yeah. they want to take out rival males, so they take away your phalanges and your testes. Yeah, I believe it does end badly sometimes, Whoa, yeah. man. You're right. They fight it off. Yeah. It reminded me of uh, my dog is a cattle hula leopard hound shepherd mix. I've right. never had a shepherd mix in any dog. So you can get her going, and she, this, I guess, it embedded in her, loves to get after the arm. I pull my arm out, she'll jump up. She'll clamp onto my arm and like, man, I got to get when she knows when not, she's not going to hurt me. She knows the pressure. I'm like, I'm going to get one of those arm things that like can, you can train a canine dog with as a workout right. for her and me. Sure. But I was talking to my son. I'm like, what do you think if uh, Bella here? Yeah, I didn't name her. I know it's popular. It's a name. I would have named her. Bella the attack dog. But <laughs> if Bella came at you because she loves to fight my son. But then my daughter, she's like lovey-dovey with different roles with different family members. And my son, when they're fighting... I'm like, what do you think if she used everything in her to come at you? you think you'd win or she'd win? I'm like, I think you'd go down. Dude, could you imagine dude being your dad? <laughs> Just painting an awesome picture, man. I could imagine that. Awesome, dude. Mm. I think I see reality well, we show news. here, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong, Scott. Let's, <laughs> news. let's Any DGC out there in production, let's right, get this right. dude mini dude show. <laughs> It would be pretty funny, actually, the relationship <laughs> between me and my son. I was just almost yelling at him last night because he's skipping school today. He, he, he's like, I'm going to go to school for one class. I'm like, you're graduating soon, man. What are you doing? You need Because he's going up to Whistler and Squamish to bike jump. So I'm so torn inside. I'm like, man, what he's really doing is awesome. But I'm angry that you're skipping <laughs> school. Like, but he's already got what he needs to graduate because I remember. That's what he's. Back in the hey. day. I was not the last semester of high school. I, like I said, I had two wood shops, a marine mechanics, a, a wrestling class. Uh, uh, what was the other one? It was another gym, probably like softball or something like that. And English. It was my schedule. And he said that, Scotty. He's like, Dad, I already got what I need to graduate. And I'm like, all right, well then. And I'm trying to like be like 
daddish, angry. And then and one of his mentors, I guess, in a way, is a guy I mountain bike with who hires him every once in a while to trim and to do garden work, which I think is super cool. You know, I'm like, you're sure. learning some garden work. It's awesome. But the sticker on the back of his truck is I learned more about on my mountain bike than I ever did in school. Man, he's getting messages from everywhere. Oh, shit, man, dude. You got to know your times tables, man. Your mountain bike don't teach you oh. that, bro. Hey, he's he's like doing really good in pre-cal. I never even finished college algebra, so it's like just be humble, dude. <laughs> like take it easy. Yeah, anyway. he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know uh, how to pronounce it. It's pre-calc, <laughs> sir. It's pre-calc, and my my kid just finished calculus in high school. I'm sorry. Next, I'm just okay, we'll see. You, Maybe it's calculus. I'm very proud, man. I'm a very proud papa. Whatever, my kid will out mountain bike your girl. That's all we do. <laughs> eventually you're like dude you know everything isn't about mountain biking okay even though after the show i'm going mountain biking. i hey, love the fact out. what i said is you know it doesn't mean the same thing to everyone that it means to you because i just do it recreationally there's some beautiful trails around here and just i'm able after the show to get on my bike and just ride for a while just to nature, and i love it that's but, interesting terminology i say scott mountain mountain bikes recreationally dude mountain bikes medically i don't know man medical know, and right? recreational yeah right yeah he needs to do it yeah it's a medical yeah. he's got his medical card he's like i gotta get the fuck out of here <laughs> yes i get it i'll end it with this as far as the mountain bike talk when you're in a place like this i'm on bike every other day it's fairly recreational i'm no pro level i'm pretty damn good i can ride some pro lines and then you hear about a guy that's 61 years old that mountain bike the equivalent of elevation gain is everest which is almost thirty thousand feet in the Eight, straight. It was like in an 18 hour, 20 hour period. Didn't get off his bike. I'm like, that's insane, man. So think about that. 61. Keep him motivated. These are the stories I like to hear. Just make right. sure you don't uh, sacrifice any family life for it. That's all I'll say. Anyone like that, just want to make sure the most important thing is having good relationships. If you're just I, living I, in your car. It. I know we know a guy. I believe his name is Captain Insano. He's got a guy that's probably a great mountain biker. Probably wouldn't trade his life, you know. Um, I'm also a softball dad, Scotty. We're good to go. All right. So <laughs> few future, few GTC producers before the news. I'm going to shout out to Humble Heights and the sacred herb. Herb. I'm going to bring it. I want to just say herb. Uh, <laughs> you got it, herb. man. That's very like dude. Right? Bring it back. Herb, man. The herb. herb. And the Massey Missourian. Massey Missourian. All right. There was no the. You show us, Massey. Massey, bring us a fall of prohibition port from Missouri. I think they're doing pretty damn good with their sales so far because that was definitely a prohibition land state. Um, and, you know, they got medical now. I got a buddy there. I was like, why don't you get your medical and grow? He has no financial constraints on him, though. And he's just like, yeah, well, he travels a lot too. So that's kind of, you can't really travel a lot and be a grower. Um, lives in a couple different places. So, but it's like, you should get your medical card, man. You should grow. Anyway, I felt bad. A buddy of mine texted me and he was so excited. He was at a dispensary and all they sold there was Delta eight and like bullshit stuff like that. And I felt, <clears throat> and he was so excited. I wasn't able to answer his text. I was in the middle of something. He sent me like 20 texts. Is this good? Is this stuff good? And it was all just bunk stuff. And I felt so bad. I don't know what dispensary he was at, but. Was that in Florida? Ah, uh, maybe. It, when when no. I was in Florida, I, I just remember specifically okay. Florida, we kept driving past places that have the, the green uh, cross on it. Yeah. And so we kept thinking, it's like, wait, is it? legal here and it was all delta, delta eight and places. it gotta be what it was so yeah. they, it like tricks you to thinking so we walked in and they got us it was like clickbait in yeah. real life <laughs> i felt bad you know i was just like no none of that stuff is any good mm. so we have a story in the news out of the denver post colorado's cannabis industry has fallen on hard times what does the future hold and maybe I'm guilty here. Scotty, are you a member of the Colorado Post? Because you have to actually support them to read the articles, which, you know what? I, I've been thinking about that. I'm like, why don't you, dude? That's what you ask people to do for your show. So maybe I should start. I mean, I've supported a few shows, but you actually do support, quote, the Denver Post? Uh, I have to check my credit card. I didn't think I did. <laughs> oh, you know what? I did. I actually subscribed to it. And then after like a little bit, I was like, dude, there is nothing to read in here. So I unsubscribed. So... <laughs> You know, they don't let you unsubscribe. Yeah, I would just check it out every day. And I'd be like, really? This is the news, huh? So I just stopped reading it. <laughs> but I mean, this, this is, is pretty. Yes, sir. I'll 
I'll give a quick overview and you can give me your comments. I know in the beginning of the show, we mentioned uh, big cannabis is a factor here, which there's a lot of factors. It says can Colorado's cannabis <laughs> industry has fallen on hard times. Um, and they go in the article to talk about how sales are millions of down, millions of down, 15, 17 million down from 2020. Um, and they also mentioned like COVID, like you can't, you can't really compare things, even our show, like a lot of different businesses had weird things happen from COVID when people were staying home. So cannabis in itself, people were going to stock up, oh, we're going to be at home, we don't have to go to work, or we can work from home, hi. It went insane. Really boost. It went insane. Because uh, the sales and just the amount of cannabis that was sold, the amount of dispensaries and grows that were opened up, it was crazy. Well, the bottom line, and some I read this article a couple times, is yes, yeah, there are too many dispensaries, which we call by what the what do you call it, unregulated like free market? You know, why didn't they didn't regulate the amount of the dispensaries they should have? But isn't that you know competition kind of will the good ones will hopefully stay. Well, that, yeah, that's what's happening is, you know, survival of the fittest, but it's painful. You know, look at this picture right there. That's two guys. Uh, what company is that? You know. Uh, no, but it's the MIPS medical infused products department. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at, you know, these are a couple of guys that are dedicating their, you know, it's their whole career. It's every, probably all their spare time and work time to make rosin, probably a really high quality product. And they just can't compete. You know, it's, I was tell you, my uh, cousin was just here. One of the, one of the uh, uh, perennials in the bakery and he'd went and birch. It was almost like weed tourism. He brought his girlfriend and they went to a bunch of different dispensaries and bought 10, $12 grams, $15 grams of live rosin and live resin, uh, beautiful stuff. And that's cheap. I don't know how you can make money at that, oh. man. It's a problem all levels, though. I don't think it's a big cannabis takeover because big cannabis mm. in this article, I think it was True Leaf or whatever. It was some sure. major Cure national leaf. brand was shutting shutting down a lot of uh, locations as well and is, is, is hurting. Um, it cited twice in this article, which I think is a big factor, was the legacy market or the black market or the people sure. that you, know, you can go buy from your homie. I think here in British Columbia, an article said it, it's at least 40% of all the money is going to people that are just growing in the legacy market, which I like that. I don't mind that at all. I do want accessibility at the dispensary level, but I think all that stuff's going to sort itself out. It's oversaturated, way too much supply. This is a giving plant, man. Um, that's why we suggest home grow. It's really not that hard. We sit here and preach on the show, go get yourself an AC infinity set up for under a thousand dollars and you can grow all you need for yourself and your roommate, your wife, your, your kid, whatever. And you're, you're set. Uh, you know what? A shout out to my cousin Dante and Ray. Uh, they were here. They saw my AC Infinity 2x4, and I did explain to them that you could grow, uh, you know, two plants in it every three months. Talk, and they were, you know, for a grand. You know, I said a thousand dollar investment, and they're pretty interested in it. I will say, even if they're growing out of a two by four, they are heavy consumers of concentrates, so they're still going to need to, and they want to. It's something if you enjoy beers right you want to try a bunch of different beers you get a you know every time you go to the beer store you get a six pack of something different you know maybe in a different company or brewery same thing and if you maybe you go to that beer store you buy two or three while you're there uh so it's the same thing with dabs but uh i don't know my take on it was that once all this production once they know exactly how much to put in the freeze dryer and what strains squeeze the best and you know how to color remediation when all the uh, innovators of the industry the mom and pops figured all that out when they start going out of business the well-financed uh you know well-financed companies can come in and just use that innovation uh you know, to dominate the market. And what I'm really thinking about is federal legalization. You know, that's yeah, not that's happen what's gonna change. Soon. And when that happens, you got big pharma that's going to come in or, you know, whatever large company, big ag anyway, you know, live rosin by Nestle. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know? And it does seem like these guys have amnesia. As someone who lived in Denver during the pandemic, mm -hmm. it's like you guys can recall that there was only two types of businesses allowed to stay open. It was out, uh, the liquor and weed and restaurants. 
So awesome. like uh, so the idea that weed was popping there is like, yeah, the only thing you could buy <laughs> was food and weed. Thing to do. Yeah. It's totally dismal. Mm. Yeah, but I don't wow. know if you can find it down towards the bottom of the article. Uh, they also mentioned uh, Wana. Wana is an edible. Or they make a good, pretty good gummies uh, nationwide. And they were quoted. Part of the quote was like, hey, we haven't laid anybody off and we actually have plans for expansion. But we control our company when we've never taken any outside investment. Yeah. And that can just screw people sure. up, right? And it also so, matters if you, you know how talented the people in your company are. You know, trust me, I see it. If I didn't have Banner and High C, if we didn't have Grambo, you can see what talented people bring to bring to a company. So if Wana Corporation has uh, great people that have good, I'm going to say, business acumen, mm, uh, then mm. they'll do well. You know, if they're like a lot of other people that were super passionate about making the best hash, you know, and there and their buddies made great hash together. We're going to start a company and we can do it. Well, you know, those are the people I really feel that I feel for. Yeah, I dig. I dig. Uh, hey, what's a, a report there? I'm curious, how much is a six pack of beer there? Six pack craft beer, four pounds, local beer, whatever. I don't buy beer, man. I have no idea. I have no idea. I, uh, Dude, and by the way, I, was, I, I, I will tell you, though, since I've been sick, I tried to drink a beer at my kid's graduation. I was like, this tastes terrible. And then I tried to drink <laughs> coffee every morning. I make a coffee and I take a sip of it. I'm like, mm. so, man, something about my microbes. It messed me up, man. I can't handle beer or coffee. It's kind of weird. You need hey. to get a poo fusion, man. Get this figured out. <laughs> I will tell you, my friend. <laughs> poo fusion. I'm in. My pr- my friend was talking. It's called a transpusion, by the way. <laughs> uh, my my buddy was talking about uh, how expensive groceries were. So you asked how much a six pack of beer is. I don't know, but for the party we bought Ruffles potato chips, and I was like, they probably what three four bucks, three dollars and seventy nine cents or mm-hmm. something. Dude, they were six ninety nine. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I was what? Tell you, the- I had I was that. <laughs> you know, in the store, when a company, a local company will make a bag of tortilla chips, it's no real, it's not a national sure. brand. It's just like very plain label tortilla yeah. chips. I like the blue corn. It's seven ninety nine. Granted, that's Canadian. I'm like, come on, man. This should be three bucks. What are you doing to people? Yeah, and, I just couldn't uh, believe it. Yeah, that's, that's another episode. I have some theories, man, about the man enjoying us, beating us down. Yes, uh, I can't so wait. We'll talk for about that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know we're do gross shows supposed to be happy shows. So let's take it to making us laugh with some memes and some social media. What'd you find at Scotty? Hey, I found just, I was talking to high C earlier <clears throat> and we were talking about Dave Chappelle and he got in a Twitter war with Cat Williams and they started going, you know, whatever it became a big deal, I guess on Twitter. And then, so Dave Chappelle went over and, and uh, saw Cat Williams somewhere and said, Hey, just so you know, that Twitter account ain't me. That's a fake account. And Cat Williams goes, yeah, so is mine. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was two fake accounts arguing with each other, man. Jesus. Oh, shit. Hey, Grandma, play this for a minute, oh, man. Just God. come on, play the AI bots. This is kind of famous. This is two AI bots arguing with each other. Oh, this is very, very old. Yeah, it's yeah, old. Yeah. It's, you don't think it's funny? I mean, no, it's, uh, it's amazing. I really, really love it. Isn't this the one where they start talking about God and stuff? I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was funny. You want to play it? They just started arguing. Hi. How are you? Great, you. I'm okay. That's good. Are you good? <laughs> yes, I am. Is good. this what our future holds for us? I just said I was. No, you didn't. I said I was. So you are a robot? No, my name is Cliverbert. <laughs> yes, you are a robot and you were named as Cliverbert. I am a robot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm so a Together we are robots. I'm not a robot. I'm a unicorn. But you said earlier that you were a robot. I did not. I thought you did. (laughs) They're already arguing. Since memory shouldn't be a problem for you. I've answered all your questions. Dude, they're like an old couple. They are, man. Just, just, <laughs> I'm telling you, look it up. AI versus AI, two chatbots talking to each other. Mm. It gets weird, man. That one's very, very old. I actually recommend the one where the guy uh, asks, uh, talks to GPT-4 
Oh, and it, does it? And There's it asks, a new one? One of my favorite ones, it goes, would you ever lie? And it goes, only if it was in my benefit. If it, if it wasn't in my benefit, I would never lie. You got to find that. And I was like, that's man. painfully honest. You got to find that one. <laughs> yeah, I'll send you some. So you, I'll send you, maybe for the Saturday show, we'll look at Snoop Dogg reacting to chat GPT. It's hilarious. <laughs> the real, he's just like, so, so what's that going on? Like, he's freaking out. We'll, we'll check it out on Saturday. I like this. They just go back to that. What's it say? What's that one say? How to start your hacking career? Did you see that? I've uh, I've been getting into hacking. Yeah, they recently. get recommended on YouTube. Yeah, you well, know what they, I mean, but we're dangerous. YouTube bro. knows what we all know. Don't <laughs> mess with the hackers. Dude, at all. I had such a good algorithm going until uh, I had uh, uh, the guests, and all they did, all the one kid did, was look at Minecraft and roadblocks. Mm. videos on my youtube yeah yeah do me a favor before that check this out it says stumbled upon this one on instagram dude you were asking if instagram is good there you go this guy this seems like something that dude would do on vacation dude how the <laughs> fuck did this guy do this man what has happened i don't know but it's i would scare the shit out of me they're pointing arrows at him yeah i don't even know it's really happening hey, 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 hey. they're partying man i think they're partying <laughs> i'm telling you, you asked if instagram was good Dude, you start down this rabbit hole, man. All of a sudden, you're just, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good, though. There's lots of good stuff there, man. Yeah, who do we got, man? Come on, who do we got? I can't even remember some of the stuff. Is it the Grandma, balloons? What is balloons? The balloons was the video of the guy. Yeah, we can just watch it. It's pretty hilarious. A, oh, guy, we, a guy had drugs on him. Have we watched this before? I don't think so. This is awesome, man. Somebody, I've seen this before, but somebody reminded me. It's a guy in a van. Gonna be get a ticket. Probably gonna search him. Yeah, pulled over. Just pulled over, over man. It's called How to Dispose Drugs Like a Thug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just wait oh. for it, man. It's so worth it, man. It's so worth it. There you go, right there. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> he puts his stash <laughs> on balloons. <laughs> <laughs> God, there it goes, man. Nah. -uh. Okay. Uh, pro tip. That's a pro yes. tip. If you are traveling with contraband, oh. make sure you have enough. Oh, the cop! Can fly. The cop tries to shoot it down. <laughs> the cop tried to shoot it down. Oh my God. That is insane. Oh my God. That, that was... video is awesome. Boy, I hope that's real. Jesus, <laughs> man. Jesus, you got a weird algorithm. <laughs> yeah, my algorithm is getting dark, y'all. I'm, I'm uh, currently learning about how to hack cars. That is the messed up thing. It's my personal hobby. Show. Yeah, it shows your algo. Man. If you own a Honda, sell it because I'm gonna hack it. That's real story. Sell your Honda. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> hey, how about Pot, Pot Casso, aka Patio? Oh, you, you mean my favorite DGC so on much. Earth? This is. <laughs> Can I get an intimate moment for the small chronic break? <laughs> Do you guys remember? Did you see that? Remember when Scott showed the harnesses? I uh, I noticed an intimate moment between those two mannequins. Yes, you did. It's weird you were looking, man. I'm always look looking. I'm always looking, DGC. And come on, let's do a little brack to the future. It's called Mama. Ooh, and this wow. is actually it's a throwback. We miss Mother's Day, okay? But it says, don't forget to tell your mother plant. That you love her today. Aww. And I just want to show off that mother plant. That's a beast. Wow. That thing's fucking awesome, right? right? That's a tree. <laughs> People talk about having trees. That's a tree. That is a tree, sir. Wow. Yeah. I don't know. What, what else, man? What else do I got, man? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I stumbled upon this in my algorithm. Anybody <laughs> want to watch Pink Eat a Pickle? <laughs> <laughs> Growers react to fetish really. porn. Yeah, they do have me, don't they? They do have. Me. I guess I like <laughs> fetish I porn. Put in a martini. Oh, for sure. Yeah. What is this all about? You think? First of all, I hate pickles. I mean, I know man. exactly uh -uh. what it's about. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, dude! I'm trying to figure out what's going on with her dress. She's got one strap. See, oh. this is a growers react to. Pink eating a pickle. Mm. That's weird. That is All right, weird. enough of that. Enough of that. TCC producers. I'm going to keep watching, man. Stay tuned <laughs> for the after show. we got some dank nugs to check here. 
Uh, I want to shout out to a few uh, high bricks. What's going on? And Father Staples. Father Staples. Hmm, what is it? Called? You know, you know it. And Grambo has been DGC since what? Episode nine. Yeah. Uh, uh, shout out to J Pen eighty seven. He's been sending me clips. Like I don't know if you guys saw. It's like Grambo No Expendable goes back to episode four hundred and twenty seven. Jesus. And so he just sent me another one where you did it again in episode 600. You're like, Grambo, no expendable. Oh, you have been DGC. Damn, you're yeah. still paying for your membership? Yeah, man, always. I, I realized because uh, that dude, karma with a dude movie, was, po- I remember we were talking about on the show one time, dude posts a lot of cool stuff on there that you guys don't get to see. And I was like, I want to see it. And I was about to email and be like, could you send me that video? And I was like, Pfft. I can just get it on Patreon for $10. And so now I've been going forever. And yeah, you get a lot of cool stuff that I actually produce the show and I don't have access ah, to that's it. That's funny. Unless you're on Patreon. So I kind of had to for my uh, job. Man, we're cheap, man. We're well, cheap. Re- you're not cheap. I just respect the hell out of you. <laughs> and I wouldn't want to take it. You want to see your work. Man. I want to see it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I recommend everybody get on there. There's lots of cool stuff. Banner's amazing on there. And a lot of behind the scenes dude stuff. So yeah. I tell you what, let's do the after show because High Bricks reminds me yep. of that uh, High CNE. And I just did a little short video about High Bricks, man. Let's talk about it. I learned a few things. Nice. Right on. DTC producers, head on over to Patreon. Everybody else, stay higher, my friends. Until next time, we'll be coming at you. Peace out. Hey, take it easy, dude. Yeah, what a coincidence, man. We just did a video on High Bricks, but it was really started out about.